Well, when I take graduate students, I'm delighted to have people who worked on farms because they're resourceful. They get up at four in the morning. There's nobody they can call for help. They have to do it themselves or who are captains of their athletic teams because they're relentless. You know, they just push, 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 push. Now, that's not the only type of person that makes a good science, but often there's a good connection there. What, so, what does make a, a good scientist? I mean, what, what, you've had a lot of students over your career, and um, uh, I think one of the comments that uh, I've heard you make is that the people who spend the most time in the lab are not necessarily the most productive scientists. Correct. That's correct. So what, is, what makes the productive scientist? I think it's the ability to, to understand when you're seeing something important and, uh, and, and not to think because an experiment fails that you have failed or because you have not uh, fulfilled the expectation of your advisor that you have failed in some way, because you may well be finding something that's even more important than that expectation. And so it's the people who can see through that um, and make something out of it. And so many of the discoveries, including many of the most important medical discoveries, are made from complete serendipitous discoveries like cisplatin. I mean, before cisplatin, Cis testicular cancer was the leading cause of death of males aged 20 to 40 and would be today. So there's about 8,000 cases in, in the U.S. each year, and only about 10 or 12% of the guys survived. After cisplatin, it was a 98% survival rate, and it still is today. 